Okay, good. So thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. Just some background in, on this talk. I was exchanging the email with Andy regarding the similar topic I'm going to give in next week at the, the TEF, the Ethernet Alliances. And then he asked me that is, the Dave used to be on this session, uh, couldn't make it, and asked me to step in to help out. And uh, I'd be happy to do that. So that's the background. And uh, so the content is largely based on what I prepared for the, what we're going to talk about in the next week with slight change in the feed into the program here. So the title here is the 30s at the 224 gigabit per second and beyond. So, um, to talk about that, I'd like to discuss where we came from, right? And uh, so largely, you see that I'm from Intel, and also I'm also the OIF, you know, board, you know, the board member, board director. So I'd like to discuss this uh, to some degree within the context of the work myself and many of you guys did within the OIF CEI, you know, the standard we developed, which kind of helped the industry largely for the past to, to speak. So uh, that's the, the sort of process. So to start with uh, the 100 gig, you know, which we actually, within the, the CEI, we defined the five clouds at uh, 112 gig. Start is the shortest one within the package, XSR, near package, XR plus, you know, chip to chip, uh, chip to module, and also the longer reach, okay. So you can see that it's, it's the CEI, the tradition they've been serving the industry, and this is currently, you know, we're working on the 6.0, sixth generation. And this is the fifth generation. So the common theme here is the PAM4 crossing the board. And that is important for the ecosystem because with the commonality, you basically assure the compatibility, and therefore, architecture-wise, you enable lowest the power and the cost and the possible latency for the ecosystem. And this is the 100 gig is where the DFSP kick in from the 30s architecture perspective, fill in, you, you see that it's important for the companies, also important for optics to give it a rich performance, power and latency and so on. So right now, we are working on the 200 gig. We're still working progress, and we're in good shape. We have the baseline. Myself has been involving. I'm either the editor or you know co-editor for all those clouds, and uh, so we're making good progress in low. So, at the beginning of the 200 gig, about uh, three four years ago, most people don't think pan for even possible at two to four gigabit per second. People want to go to the space of high order modulation, but guess what? We're demonstrating with hard work, the PAM4 still work well, crossing all the reaches so far, you can see that. So therefore, you can maintain the same goodies of the ecosystem crossing board, from the optics, the electrical, and the both snowman. So that's the angle. So the real question is, can we maintain this to the next speed? So you already see you know, some of the discussion from the, the optical domain, from the channel perspective. Now I want to cover from both you know, the 30s and also another important part of the package portion, where it looks like. Being with Intel, I have to talk about the Moore's law. And uh, that's the DNA. And uh, this is the ISCC publication. Give it a train, is ISCC published in the past 20 years. And you can see that the rate keep going, right? The silicon part also continues to support a few, the foundational technology allow us to go higher rate with also the associated power reduction. So the middle one is basically picojo per bit efficiency is continue going down as time going. And the third one on, the, you know, on, the, on your right is actually the picojo per bit normalized to the dB. That's important and then continue going down. More slow continue driving as enablers the technology or the mean to give the end application the lower power and therefore you know, kind of low latency. They, to some degree, they are you know, tied together. So we anticipate these trends are going to continue. 
So that's kind of the setup. Okay. So how do we get that? Right. And uh, there is law of the physics we need to you know respect. In the communications, the law of the capacity, which is the Shannon's law. So Shannon's law has basically two components. One is the bandwidth, another is signal noise ratio. It doesn't matter electrical optical. I mean, I mean, I'm a trained you know the engineer, but also you know I'm a physicist. So I, I like to talk about this in the, in the concept, the simplified version, which is what you see. At the end of the day, what we do is improve the bandwidth, improve the signal noise ratio, regardless you're dealing with electron for that. So in the, you know, the left side, how you do that, one way is efficiency usage is the high order modulation. So you feed into the Shannon's limit. So that's part of one. The second part is you introduce the fact, which is another way improve the performance. Okay? You, you, you basically address the capacity and also performance at the same time. On the right hand side, as you improve the media in between, including package, connect, and so on. We'll talk about this, right? So it's just basically, it's all boils down to the insertion loss, reflection, and the crosstalk. I saw the you know, uncertainty principle. You can't have all of them, but you need all of them to be improved. So we're getting there. You know, it's just, so once you solve that, you can continue getting the solution scale to the future. So before I talk about it, I guess to talk about the important, it's like the 200 gig, what did the two, you know, 44A looks like and what are the desirability? What, what really the end application you want? So already see that the reality is the PAM4 has been with us since 53 and then, you know, 106 and 212. And then moving forward is at least the three generation, both the Ethernet side and the CEI side. So if we, you know, hypothetically, naturally, if we can extend the PAM4, Okay, may not be for order reach, maybe order reach, we don't know, time will tell. Suppose if you can do that, what do you get at the benefit? You get at the, you know, the backward compatibility, you, like, you get the electrical, optical, we already see that the 44 optical, the previous the speaker already talked about it, feasibility is there. And another part that don't undermine the, the, the development, the test measurement, the methodology, equipment, and so on is ready. So for time to market, Scale to volume this is crucially important, right? To be considered, and the AI, as you see, that is they like to get uh, upgrading every two years. So that's the important part. So supposing, if you want to maintain the 44A, yeah, with the same modulation, you don't change in that game. You don't change in architecture. So what that means, you have to, you know, basically working for a few things. You have to improve your bandwidth by 2x, you have to improve you know, uh, the, the general OS by 2x, roughly, compared with the previous generation. And you do the same on the channel part, which is everything, the signal passing through, getting out of the package, and getting to the, you know, the PCB or cable, and, you know, or if you have the connect in between, and so on. So you have to do all this nine yard work to ensure you have an end-to-end -end solution, right? So let's look at you know what uh, in the PAM space and this is a, again this is the textbook kind of deal, so you can you can always go to this space you know th sweeping through your solution space stuff from PAM four you know to you know PAM sixteen if you want but there's implications so the PAM four if you can maintain it's probably most challenging why because you have reduced the timing that's a critical thing at the same time you maintain the best S and R nothing's for free in this world okay. It's really a trade-off, you know, where you want to spend your energy to do the trade-off. So, um, if you look into this, another way of the Shannon's law is called a bandwidth efficiency plan. The purple line is the Shannon's limit. You cannot go beyond that. And once you go beyond, you violate law. You can't. You just the simply. So you, you can look at this in terms of. The, you know, the, the normalized the bandwidth efficiency in you know, the bits you know, per second per unit you know, hertz, and then x axis basically essential energy to noise ratio. That's important. You, you, you like to maintain that as small as possible because that gives you the low, you know, the best energy efficiency. At the same time, you also want to get the best performance. And then you can see that here the blue line is the worst performance. And then the red one is the best performance. So 
The point is being when you're starting with the worst performance, you're kind of getting closer to the shearing limit, but your performance is not good. So you have your slew of the fag, really strong fag to fix the problem. And guess what? AI doesn't like fag. Why? Because AI machine learning like latency. So you have to balance in all these space multi-dimensional find the, the best energy efficiency and the best latency for the suitable solution. Right. So this kind of give you, in the graph, you're showing that, you, you get that portion. Now, so this is probably the, the further part. The fab is good, but the fact is, you know, it's, it's causing you, you know, both the you know, additional power and the latency. This is basically showing it's, it's a very, you know, simple argument. If you go at once, you know, the, the fact basically, uh, it's, it's basically the, you know, the bits per simple get increased, and therefore the modulation simple versus you know fat code word get increased. So you are more subject to the you know the burst error. That's just the, the fundamental limitation you have. So you got to be careful. Why go at once? Much can help you to alleviate you know some of the channel cycle defect, but also cost you the other way. So be careful. There's no free lunch again here. So this quantitative is showing that. If you go with the same modulation, PAM4 you know, versus you know, PAM8 and so on, you know, the, the, you know, the error efficiency, the error you know, kind of characteristics, the high order modulation is always worse. So that means you have to spend a lot of energy to clean it up, especially in dealing with the burst error. So basically, the same thing is true in here, showing that you know, the fact work well today, which is Rita Solomon, you know, 544, you know, 514, if you want to go at the once the modulation, you want to stay within y minus 15 post fat. You can't do that. You have to make it you know, stronger. I mean, stronger what? That means power, you know, higher rate overhead, and also later, and so on. So there's good incentive to maintain, to make the plan for work before you consider other you know, options, alternative. Okay? So that's basically the Shannon's law point to you that if you respect that the basic fundamental. So now, I want to focus on specifically one portion because this is the photonic part, so I want to focus on the chipped module. Here's the diagram I used for the chipped module. There are two types of you know, chipped module. One where they talk about on the far left side is the host to the OE and the, stu, you know, the OIF defined XSR in you know, the channel. So the, the beauty of this one is also this way. You know, maintain it in you know, the same modulation and also give you a longer reach versus other single-ended which only support, you know, never the, is this kind of speed, but also short support, really short, you know, that reach between, you know, it's typically like around the, you know, 10, 10 millimeter. So if you want a routing distance, Parallel you know, I.O. doesn't help you that much. Okay, so from here you see that for the 224, we have uniform solution, we'll work hard, we'll roll it on the sleeve, solve that problem, and which is basically, you can cross in the board using the pan for the server, you know, to serve the interconnect within the package, offset of the package for the chip margin. So now the real question is for the 44A, what the situation looks like, and then, and obviously, it's no brainer for the you know the within the package you can solve that, and it's you know loss is a little bit worse like we're showing there, but it's it's feasible, and uh, for the electric chip the module, and uh, we're gonna see, you know see that from the third is but there's no problem, but I think the one of the uncertainty is we need to solve the connect problem if you know if we want today's the, the topology no change and make it work, and the here you know analysis what we're assuming here. As long as the connect can be maintained at the night quest less than 10 dB, there's no problem can make it work. Optical already see that, you know, this one talk is, is the feasible. So if you, if you solve this problem again, the benefit, if you maintain the pan for chip the module, you get a backward compatibility, you get electric optical compatibility, you get lower power costs and the TCO, and you also get a better performance and the latency. So this is all what the AI wanted. Okay, so. I need to be quick. So the bottom line is, you know, with advanced node, either, you know, the N2 or, you know, N, you know 18A less with the GAA type of the technology, the 44 pan 40 and the 30 is feasible. That's my conclusion. On the package part, 
We also did our due diligence. The key thing, one of the key parameters to make it, you know, the packages supporting the bandwidth needed for 4A, which is 112, gig, 112 gigahertz, is the pitch. You just do the math. This is the well known. It's as long as you meet at the point of five millimeter in the, pack, you know, you know, the pitch, along with other like the advanced material, the stack up, and, you know, it's smart use of skip that, you can solve that problem. There's no problem. There's no suck, suck out effect. You can support it. So we did these two analyses, and with this kind of the feasible you know, analysis for two types of topology, one's conventional, like the A-inch, uh, as long as you're assuming basically the bump to bump is less than 40 dB, which is 30, certainly can support it. Uh, another, you know, is basically less than if you're using the flyover, and this chip topology at the 4-4A, PAM4 specific, it's also supportable. So in summary, a couple of key points. That we know that the fact you know, the PAM4 you know, serve well, as well as the ecosystem for the Ethernet, for the CEI, for the, you know, what you talk about here, UEC and the UA link well, because UEC and UA is going to leverage the Ethernet phi in you know, four years. They are not going to touch that. That's the major overhaul. You know, overhaul. And uh, so it's, it's so serving well, and it's, it's just trying to emphasize it's, this is the dominant modulation for both electrical and optical, at least you know, the, the short reach you know, for three generations already. And the third is supporting the 44A, you know, both in the PAM4 and PAM6 with advanced node is yes, feasible, and we know that. And the package part we know is also feasible to support the 44A PAM4. And uh, now come back to the, the channel part. As long as either you redo, you know, your, your channel, you know, the, the connector loss, you know, maintained less than 10 dB, or you have, you know, kind of smarter design, you know, already showing that, the gear run this kind of bottleneck, and uh, the chip the module, it's uh, supportable. So, and obviously, I want to emphasize, once you're achieving that, you get all the benefit, especially, especially important for the AI machine learning, including the backward accountability, electrical, optical accountability, lower power, lower cost, and lower TCO, as well as the better performance and low latency. With that, I end up my talk. Thank you.